Good morning, and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. I am Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I am so glad that you have joined us today. Our worship service this morning is inspired by Octavia Butler. She was a pioneering black science fiction writer. Two of her novels, Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents, feature a young black female protagonist named Lauren Olamina. The books are set in the future, a dystopian American landscape of chaos and violence. Lauren is trying to make sense of it all and to find and spread a message of hope and courage to those she meets. She ends up creating her own religion, which she calls Earth Seed. And she writes her own sacred text called Earth Seed, the Books of the Living. The verses are short and poetic. They draw people to them with their themes of courage, change, and survival. I have been drawn again to these themes and to these stories during this pandemic. They feel even more real and relevant to me now. I even see some parallels between Earthseed and Unitarian Universalism. So I invite you to put your imaginations to work this morning as we delve into these science fiction stories that are feeling a little close for comfort these days. And as I light my chalice here in the meeting house, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are. In this way, we can feel connected even as we are apart. Good morning, this is Ryan Lighting Chalice from Truro. This morning's Chalice Lighting words are by Octavia Butler. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change.
Today's reading is from Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. In this scene, Lauren Alamina is talking to a teenager named Dan about her religion, Earthseed. The Earthseed followers have just helped to rescue Dan and his sisters from some pretty traumatic events and losses. So you're saying praying doesn't work, Dan asked? Oh no! Praying does work. Praying is a very effective way of talking to yourself, of talking yourself into things, of focusing your attention on whatever it is you want to do. It can give you a feeling of control and help you to stretch yourself beyond what you thought were your limits. It doesn't always work the way I want it to, I said, but it's always worth the effort. Even if when I pray, I ask God to help me, he asked. Even so, I said, you're the one of your word, you're the one your words reach and strengthen. You can think of it as praying to that part of God that's within you. He thought about that for a while. Then he looked at me as though he had a big question, but hadn't yet decided how to ask it. He looked down at the book. How do you know you're right? He asked. I mean, that guy who wants to be president, he would call you all heathens or pagans or something. Indeed he would. Yes, I said, he does seem to enjoy calling people things like that. Once he's made everyone who isn't like him sound evil, Then he can blame them for problems he knows they didn't cause. That's easier than trying to fix the problems. But how do you know you're right, he insisted. How do you know Earthseed is true? Who says it's true? You do, Dan. I let him chew on that for a while, then went on. You learn, you think, You question, you question us, you question yourself. Then, if you find Earthseed to be true, you join us. You help us teach others. You help others the way we've helped you and your sisters. He stared at me, but now he was shaking. He made me think of a crystal thing vibrating to sound about to shatter. I pulled him to me, held him, this big child taller than me. I felt his tears wet on my shoulder, 
Then I felt his arms go around me, hugging back, still shaking, silent, desperate, hanging on. When I first read Octavia Butler's Afrofuturist novels, Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents, I was transported into a world of science fiction that was both exciting and otherworldly. The characters in the stories are fighting to survive the socioeconomic and political collapse of 21st century America. Poor environmental stewardship, corporate greed, and the growing gap between the wealthy and the poor have pitted people against each other. The world is chaos, fire, and dystopia. When Lauren Olamina's neighborhood is burned to the ground, she flees with just the clothes on her back and a backpack that she has readied for emergencies. She makes her way north in search of safety, stability, community. It's hard to trust strangers these days, but there is also safety in numbers. And so Lauren slowly gathers a small band of people around her, people she can trust and who learn to trust her. They engage in violence only to protect themselves, not to accrue possessions or torment others as some do. They scrounge for food and supplies. They help people in trouble. They are creative, resilient, determined. They are also grieving, frightened, traumatized. Lauren seeks to provide comfort and healing as well as safety. She craves purpose, not just survival. In her notebook, she begins to write verses of poetry. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. At night, gathered around small fires of rubble, she shares her verses with her companions. They begin to memorize them, repeat them, organize their lives around them. And they continue to journey north until finally they reach Northern California, where they found the first earth seed community, which they name Acorn. They take the heaped up ashes of their previous lives and plant in them the small seeds of hope that they have found for their future. In order to rise from its own ashes, a phoenix first must burn, Lauren writes. It was an apt earth seed verse, but not a comforting one, she remarks. The problem with Earthseed has always been that it isn't a very comforting belief system. I feel that way sometimes about Unitarian Universalism. We offer more questions than answers. We value doubt more than reassurances. We don't claim to know what happens when we die or that there is a plan for our living even. But like Lauren Olamina and her acorn community, we do know that we are stronger together, that doubting and questioning seem better than dogma and fascism, that we must be the change we wish to see in the world. Reading Octavia Butler's work now it doesn't feel so much like science fiction. It all feels eerily familiar. 
I mean, those words about the man running for president, I don't think I have to explain the parallels. And enhancing divisions to keep people down, natural resources becoming more scarce, diseases spreading rampantly, the chaos feels closer now. Chaos is God's most dangerous face, amorphous, roiling, hungry, shape chaos, shape God, act. Alter the speed of change, alter the direction of change, vary the scope of change, recombine the seeds of change, transmute the impact of change, seize change, use it, adapt and grow. Back here in 2020, our world is changing. This is true. We can't stop it from changing by building walls or making America great again. We can't go back to the past, which was never a heyday for most people anyway. We can only go forward, try to make some of the changes into good ones, ones that bring liberation and prosperity to more people ones that protect our environment. We know that though we are not in control, we do control some things, and that we want to respond to the world with generosity, with kindness, with love. God is change, and in the end, God prevails. But meanwhile, Kindness eases change. Love quiets fear. And a sweet and powerful, positive obsession blunts pain, diverts rage, and engages each of us in the greatest, the most intense of our chosen struggles. Lots of people told Lauren Olamina that Earthseed wasn't really a religion. People tell me that about Unitarian Universalism too sometimes. I don't agree with it, but it never bothers me. Having a positive obsession blunts pain, diverts rage, engages me in the world helps me imagine a better future, provides a container, a community in which to care for people. If God is change, then who loves us? Asks one of Lauren's skeptics. Who cares about us? Who cares for us? We care for one another. Lauren says, we care for ourselves and one another. Kindness eases change. Love quiets fear. I do find comfort in that. Do you? Now, Lauren believes that humankind's destiny is to travel beyond Earth and live on other planets, among the stars, forcing humankind into its adulthood, and that Earthseed is preparation for this destiny. This is the part of the story that I didn't really get at first. This is the part that seemed way too much like science fiction to be believable. Here's where Earthseed and Unitarian Universalism didn't line up at all. I don't aspire to live among the stars. But it helped to read and listen to Adrienne Marie Brown, a contemporary writer and woman of color social justice warrior she helped me to understand 
that the part about the stars was about having an imagination and that imagining different futures is what enables us to create and shape change now. In her book, Emergent Strategy, Adrienne speaks of the power and limitations of imagination. Imagination has people thinking they can go from being poor to a millionaire as part of a shared American dream, she says. Imagination also turns brown bombers into terrorists and white bombers into mentally ill victims. Imagination gives us borders, gives us superiority, gives us race as an indicator of capability. I often feel I am trapped inside someone else's imagination, Adrian says. I must engage my own imagination in order to break free. All of this imagining, she says, in the poverty of our current system is heightened because of scarcity economics. There isn't enough, so we need to hoard, enclose, divide, fence up, and prioritize resources and people. This is the dilemma in the parable stories and in our own time. We are creating a hierarchy of people. We have to imagine beyond those fears, Adrian says. We must imagine new worlds that transition ideologies and norms so that no one sees black people as murderers or brown people as terrorists and aliens, but all of us as potential cultural and economic innovators. This is a time travel exercise for the heart, she says. What are the ideas that will liberate all of us. Science fiction is simply a way to practice the future together, she explains. I suspect, Adrian says, that that is what many of you are up to, practicing futures together, practicing justice together, living into new stories, it is our right and our responsibility to create a new world. Humans, some of us are surviving, following, flocking, but some of us are trying to imagine where we are going as we fly. So you're saying that prayer doesn't work? Dan asked. Oh no, said Lauren Olamina. Praying does work. Praying is a very effective way of talking to yourself, of talking yourself into things, of focusing your attention on whatever it is you want to do. It can give you a feeling of control and help you to stretch yourself beyond what you thought were your limits. It doesn't always work the way we want it to, she said, but it's always worth the effort. So with this in mind, I invite you into prayer now as a way to end our service today. This extended prayer and musical meditation is led by my colleague Gretchen Haley. May it be so.
Will you pray with me now? We need a prayer for all the stuck places. The stuck places in us, in our bodies, in our hearts, our minds. We need a prayer for the stuck places in our families and in our world. For all those days when it feels like everything is caught, caught in an endless loop of same and status quo and sterility. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. Those are words from thousands of years ago. The book of Ecclesiastes, still they ring true. What has been is what will be. What has been done is what will be done. Spirit of truth, this is our prayer. Help us to get over ourselves. Help us to release the restrictions that fear and grief and white supremacy have kept on our imagination. Open us to the holy possibilities, the holy possibilities that are available to us in this moment and in every moment. I mean, connect us to the change that is everywhere, the change that is in the dirt, the change that is in the trees, the change that is in the rocks and the river and in the yellow squash flower and the once in 6,000 years appearance of flying stars we barely manage to catch a glimpse of now. But we do. There's a truth, There's a truth beyond our knowledge. Beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a future burning brighter. There's a love to guide our way. Connect us to our own power, to the shifting plates of our hearts, the ancient dust we contain and shed with each breath, each step, and tend still to the grief of all that has been lost. Ugh. Tend to our grief and all we keep losing, the unfair choices we're faced with, the no good options we find ourselves with. Give us the courage to wail in anger so that we can make space in our lungs for a new song, a lullaby for all that is being born in this great and living darkness, the shadows of surprise and surrender, all that readies in us and in Dr. King's still worthy dream of beloved community to change, to be changed, and to know it all as God. God is changed. There's a truth truth beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a future burning brighter. There's a love to guide our way. There's a truth.
give thanks for this we call out with thanks for this we sing out praise and gladness for this that we can wake up to this world again that we can wake up to its beauty its possibility that we can keep on getting into good trouble like the prophet john lewis said we can keep on getting into good trouble necessary trouble and we can praise and give thanks that we just have the strength and most of all that we have the company to keep moving forward eyes open into the dawning day amen Blessed be. There's a truth beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a truth.